Hey everybody, so one question that I've seen and actually wondered myself but really never found a good answer to is whether F8X and F2X, F3X dampers are interchangeable and you can put one on the other. You know, there's a lot of people that swap F, you know, 8X, M2, M3, M4 control arms on their 2 and 3 series, 2, 3, 4 series cars. So why can't you swap the dampers as well? Well, I am lucky enough to have a set of F8X Olin's Road and Track dampers here and a set of OE dampers from a uh, F32-435i. So let's go ahead and take a look at these and uh, see whether or not you can swap them. All right, let's take a look at the front struts. Down here we have the front strut from an F2X, F3X, 435i, and on the top is a uh, Olin's Road and Track strut for the M2, M3, and M4. Now, you know, to figure out whether or not these guys, uh, you know, can interchange, let's take a look at the mounting points. So, starting from here on the left at the top, um, the Olin's unfortunately doesn't do a good job of showing this because it uses a different thread up top than the OE damper and then it uses uh, these you know sleeves or shims to size up but these are actually different on the F2X, F3X this is an M12 thread and on the F8X it is M14 so it's a little bit larger in diameter now of course you know you could just take the top mount uh, of an F8X car and put it on your F3X car and then you'd be able to fit that or vice versa but that's not the only difference and despite these two struts looking similar elsewhere right you know the uh, end link mounting points in like the same spot and, you know they're roughly the same length well if we look down here where the uh, the knuckle um, goes around the strut we can clearly see that the F2X F3X strut is a smaller diameter than the F8X one. And this is only 57 millimeters in diameter versus the F8X is 62. Now, you may be wondering, well, why did BMW do that? And I think it really has to do with the construction of the struts. We can clearly see this OE damper, just like the rest of the F2X, F3X line, is made out of this steel body. And, uh, you know, if I had an OE damper from an F F8X car up here, you would see that it is a lightweight aluminum. And it is actually amazing to me how light they made the stock uh, front struts on the F8X. And well, you know, aluminum is not as strong of a material as a steel. So in order to have the same strength, you have to make the material thicker or the tube thicker. So I think that's probably why this uses a 62 millimeter uh, diameter uh, tube versus the 57 millimeter on the F. Uh, 2x f3x and you can clearly see like this Olin's you know this has a steel tube um, therefore it can be a lot thinner it's even thinner than this uh, you know the stock damper here um, but you know they can still keep it really strong so unfortunately the front struts on an f2x f3x are not interchangeable well not unless you're willing to do quite a bit of work you know making up the difference between these diameters here so here we have a F2X, F3X damper on the bottom and an F8X damper on top. Once again, you know, this is not an OE damper like the bottom one is. This is from a Olin's Road and Track kit. And you actually can swap these dampers between the two chassis with some caveats. And, uh, you know, to, to see what those are, well, let's just start by, once again, looking at where these interface with the car. And we'll start here on the left. Um, it should be pretty apparent that the thickness or thread size over here is much larger than the one down here. And the F2X, F3X, they use an M10 thread and the uh, F8X cars use an M14 thread. And, you know, it's not very apparent here why this is larger than down here. But if I had an OE damper out, you would see that the shock shaft on the F8X is larger than on the F2X, F3X. This one on the F2X, F3X is 14 millimeters in diameter and on the F8X it is 18 millimeters in diameter. And well that leads to the next question, you know, why are the shock shafts different? Uh, you know, the rear damper, it's not locating any part of the suspension like a front strut is. And the reason why I'm pretty sure that is, is because the M3, M4 and now M2 CS they have an adaptive suspension option. And on that adaptive suspension, the wire that goes and controls, you know, the internal valve, it actually goes in through the top of the, uh, the shock shaft here, runs down through it and into the piston assembly. And well, 
you know, I guess BMW felt that they had to make the shock shaft larger in diameter to fit that extra wire. And another thing that confirms, uh, you know, or backs up that hypothesis of mine is if we look at this Olin's damper here, the shock shaft on here, this is actually 14 millimeter, the same as on the F2X, F3X damper. Because this is a passive damper, it doesn't need to be larger for any wires running down it. Now, there are some benefits for having this slimmer 14 millimeter shaft, um, and we'll go into those a little bit later. So if you want to try and put an F8X damper on your F2X, F3X car, well you can, but you're going to need the F8X top mount, rear top mount, which has a larger opening hole for this uh, larger thread. Now let's move to the right side or lower side of the damper. Now, you know, at first glance, you know, this area, it looks the same, you know, it's just a pass through for a bolt down here, but actually there is some difference, and that difference is how thick this uh, mounting bushing is. On the F2X, F3X, this guy is 64 millimeters wide, and on the F8X, it's only 60 millimeters. And you may be asking, well, why did they make it different? I mean, you know, they pretty much mount the same way in the camber arm, and they even use the same bolt. Uh, and the reason probably why is the construction of the arm itself. Now the F2X, F3X, they have a stamped steel lower camber arm, so the walls of that arm are very thin versus the uh, F8X, well that uses an aluminum lower camber arm, so just like you know when we talked about the front strut, how it had to be a little bit thicker because it was made out of a weaker lightweight material to have the same or, uh, you know, strength as the stamp seal part, well I think that's the same reason why we have that here. We have an aluminum lower camber arm that this has to slide into, but in order to be as strong as that, at least as strong as the stamp steel part from the F2X, F3X, well the walls on that have to be thicker. So I think that extra added thickness takes up that extra, you know, two millimeters on each side. So if you wanted to try and put an F8X damper in your F2X, F3X, you'd probably have to get, you know, you'd have to get four millimeters worth of shims or, you know, two millimeters each side uh, to put on either side of this to fit in that stamp steel camber arm. And on the flip side, if you wanted to put an F3X damper into your F8X, well, you'd probably have to cut off two millimeters uh, on each side of this uh, bushing. But, you know, that's not terribly difficult because this guy is really just, you know, a metal tube and, you know, a little bit of rubber. So now let's go back to, you know, the shock shaft and why, at least for these rear dampers, having a, a thinner one is actually better. Um, well, the rear dampers, they actually have a larger piston inside than the, uh, the front ones do, the front uh, struts. And you know the area of that piston along with the area of the shock shaft determines the gas force. And what the gas force is, is you know, I'm gonna take this shaft here and I'm gonna compress it. And it takes me a certain amount of strength or you know, force in order for this thing to move. If I apply too little force, well, the shock shaft doesn't move. And uh, when you have a larger shock shaft on a, uh, a monotube damper, and monotube dampers require higher gas pressures because inside we have a piston over here, and on one side we have you know just a nitrogen fill, and the other side is all the oil. Well, you have to pressurize this nitrogen enough to, to support that oil column. Now, on these twin tube dampers, um, you know there's the inner tube and the outer tube, and so you don't need nearly as much gas pressure on these guys. But anyways, for a monotube damper, because you already inherently need a higher gas pressure. Uh, which is going to raise the gas force needed to compress the damper. Um, what that means is until you get to that threshold where the damper starts to move, the damper doesn't act like a damper at all. It acts as a solid member. So your damper is not actually being a damper. And having a larger shock shaft um, and a monotube means this has a really high gas force. And uh, when Fat Cat, me uh, Fat Cat Motorsports measured a set of rear Bilsteins for the M2, M3, M4, they measured about 90 pounds of gas force. That means you have to push 90 pounds of force on this before it starts to compress. Now take that in contrast with the stock twin tube damper of the M2, M3, M4, and that gas pressure was you know, somewhere closer to, I think like, 30 pounds. And since you need so much higher pressure on that, you know, Bilstein, it means, right, once again, the damper is not acting like a damper. It can't soak up those small uh, features 
you know, or textures in the road. And that's why people typically say like, oh yeah, I feel all the texture in the road. Well, it's because your damper is not actually working. So by going to this smaller 14 millimeter shaft, you can have lower gas pressure. And uh, you know, I measured the, uh, the gas force on this, uh, uh, on this Olin's here. And instead of the roughly you know, 90 pounds that the, uh, the Bilstein had with its 18 millimeter um, shaft, this guy was only about 50 pounds, so much less. And you can do this test at home to see how much gas force your dampers are outputting. You know, get your bathroom scale, put the damper on it, find how much the damper weighs, and then start, you know, pushing on the, the shaft uh, with the dampers against the uh, scale and see at what pound rating or what force rating uh, the shaft starts to move. Then, you know, subtract the weight of the damper from that and that's your gas force. So there you have it guys, the front struts not interchangeable between you know the F8X cars and the F2X, F3X. The rear dampers, sure you could do it, there's a couple caveats, you know, if you know your way around these cars, it's not particularly difficult, but there's just really not a great reason to do so. You know, we covered some of the reasons why, you know, the actually F2X, F3X format uh, is actually a little bit more advantageous, um, but you know, aside from that, it's, it's a decent amount of work to really figure out Oh, if an F8X damper is even going to be ideal uh, on your two or th two, three, or four series. So, I hope you found this interesting. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.